In today's video, an Aboriginal Australian woman, a senator and a musician by the name of Jacinta Price, goes in on a panel of European Australians about the rights of Indigenous Australians. Also in this video, another Aboriginal woman by the name of Professor Longton used the words of Miss Price's or Senator Price's dad against her. And lastly, a European Australian man had some words for Aboriginal Australians. In this first part of the video, Senator Jacinta Price calls on politicians to revamp the system. Take a listen. When do Indigenous people get a social, cultural and economic empowerment and voice in Parliament? We're asking to deconstruct the systems that exist. We're asking to be invited to the table. I don't know how you bridge the gap in terms of Aboriginal people are still struggling to have a voice. We are the sovereign owners of this country. I am a Wongatha Yamiji Noongar Gidja. We have never ceded sovereignty. I am tired of begging and asking for our humanity. When is it enough? We share sovereignty with the Crown. The Queen still owns some of our traditional lands. We're still begging to protect sacred sites that are over 80,000 years old from mining companies, from gas companies. We want to be the author of our own destinies. We want to be the voice because we are tired of non-Indigenous Australia thinking they know what is good for us and thinking that they can be the voice for Aboriginal Australia. So they should all learn to keep their mouth shut and start engaging Aboriginal Australia into the conversation. A very passionate and pointed speech. And there's a few things in the speech that stood out to me. Because I believe that what I have observed in this conversation will not only benefit the Aboriginal people of Australia, but it will also benefit other people in similar situations around the world. And that includes the Caribbean and Africa. Apart from her passion and her enthusiasm and emotions, one of the things that stood out to me is that there were a lot of begging and pleading. Yet at the same time, she said that the Aboriginal people did not give up their sovereignty or seceded sovereignty and that they share sovereignty with the crown. In other words, they share ownership of the land with the criminal entity that disrespected their ancestors and themselves in the worst possible way. Bombarding their way into your living room, let us use the living room, and then you will sit there and tell them or tell the people who represent them that you share sovereignty with them. To me, that is a message of weakness. If it was up to me, I would have demanded all of Australia be handed back over to the Aboriginal people. But it does not seem like the Aboriginal people want them to leave. It doesn't seem like they want them to leave, just like in other parts of the world where you always have a group of the local people who are loyal to the invaders and do not want them to leave because the invaders are very slick. They make sure that they collect a few disloyal people, treat them well so that these people can fend for them. And that is what's happening here. So it seems that some of the Aboriginal people want to have their cake and eat it too. It's as if they want the Europeans to continue driving the car, but they want to be involved in every decision-making process. And to be honest, I believe that this wishy-washy type of position makes it hard for the Aboriginal people to make their point clear. Keeping in mind that the people who they are arguing against already know what the issues are and they also don't want the point to be clear. So they enjoy the muddy conversation, they enjoy the confusion and all the other things that goes around it. Allow me to further explain. 
Jacinta Price is half Aboriginal and half European, but she's at the forefront in some instances claiming to be fighting for the Aboriginal people, which she's here, right? Her mother is an Aboriginal woman and her father is a European man. Such is the case with most of the mixed people that I have seen coming out of Australia, especially in the government. Their father and not their mother are typically Europeans. I repeat, their father and not their mother are typically Europeans. So already you can see where that will create some type of confusion. And that is why I am totally against divesting. And I know people like to say you can't love who you love, but this story is going to paint a very vivid picture for you. Senator Price, if you want to guess, is also married to a European man. So she's fighting for the Aboriginal people, the cultural, tradition, and ceremonial land. But her mother was an Aboriginal woman. She married to a European man. They got a mixed baby. And now she is married to a European man and either have or is going to have a mixed baby. And if that baby happened to be a woman, nine times out of ten, that baby is going to follow in the footstep of her mother and grandmother and also marry a European. Until that baby end up looking 100% European but can claim some Aboriginal lineage so you see how this causes confusion and so you see how they can easily replace these people and that is why i say we fall for these chess moves when they say hey if you have three percent of uh african in you then you're black but they tell you look you need to be a hundred percent white to be white so people who wants to be european or wants to be like their masters they continue to breed themselves out over and over and over until they get to a point where they can just simply disappear into the crowd. And that is why I strongly believe that it's a blessing that we look different. It's a blessing for the Africans. It's a blessing for the Aboriginal people who are also Africans are of African descent to look different because you can see who the people are who invaded your land. Unlike the Irish people who have a much harder time because they blend in so well. So it is a blessing. And that is why I don't understand why any of us would advocate to intermarrying. We have a lot of people in our community who simply run on emotions and chase off the money. But they don't see the strategic play that are happening out there. So Jacinta Price... The lady you saw being so passionate about the Aboriginal people and them having a voice, she is married to a Scottish man and his name is Colin Lilly. He's also a musician. And I know people like to come up with excuses as to why they do this and why they do that. But let me tell you something. If two armies are at war, there's no excuse that a soldier can give as to why him or her is having relationship with the enemy during a time of war. Such act would be considered treason and the punishment for treason, as we know, starts with D and ends with H. I promised to share two more parts to this video, but I decided to place them in the end screen instead. So please check it out because the situation in Australia gets really interested when you really take a look at it.